Hello there and welcome to this video all about the Analog Pocket. Now this is an amazing modern piece of hardware that plays old game cartridges, handheld cartridges from the 1980s and 1990s and even the 2000s. Because out of the box it plays Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, but you can also get adapters to play Atari Lynx, Neo Geo Pocket and Sega Game Gear. But as you'll see in a minute, there's even more than that. But let's have a look at what it does out of the box first because it's quite remarkable. First you insert a Game Boy cartridge, here I've got uh, Super Mario Land, and when you turn it on you're greeted with the open FPGA screen which is something that will come on to later, and then you're presented with a menu on the current firmware of course, uh, which gives you the option to play cartridge, so we're just going to start that first. It actually comes up with the game's name at the top of the screen, and then you're presented with this incredible, authentic Game Boy display. I say incredible and authentic because although it looks like you're looking at the individual pixels of the Game Boy, this has got 100 pixels for each dot of the game. So what that allows the analog pocket to do in fact is to simulate each pixel, draw it complete with its outline, and then you get this high resolution image of the Game Boy that looks 100% authentic and yet is crystal clear. It's got almost no ghosting. I say almost no because I don't think there's a monitor that exists that doesn't have any ghosting at all, but the screen is so sharp and crystal clear on this, it's like playing an all new Game Boy from 1989. You remember that feeling if you ever did, if you're that old like I am, uh, where you would play a Game Boy for the first time and just be amazed at the screen and the LCD and how wonderfully vibrant it all was, even though it's just green and darker shades of green, but it does look absolutely phenomenal. So before we move on, I just want to show you one of the cool things about this, and that's if you push the analog button in the middle and then the one to the right of it, then it takes a screenshot. So you can save those to a micro SD card. I recommend getting one because it opens up a lot of things that you otherwise can't do. Um, but the even better feature is if you press the analog button and hold it down and push up, because that makes a save state. Now if you're familiar with emulators, a save state basically dumps the entire contents of the RAM, so the random access memory, into a file so that you can store that to an SD card and then load it again later, exactly the moment the game was when you saved it. So if you were mid-jump in Sonic, you could save it there and then resume that jump later, which is pretty amazing. So that way you can play a game without ever losing a life if you just keep saving and loading save states. Of course, the benefit that this has in terms of not cheating is just if you're playing your handheld and haven't got to a save point, or if it didn't actually support battery save back in the day, uh, you don't have to rely on passwords anymore. You can just save your state and carry on, which is absolutely brilliant. One other thing that I'll show you on this is if you pause the game and go to settings, and then pocket and systems, you can then select the system that you're playing. Here it's Game Boy. And then I can go to video and display mode. And it's got all these emulations of the different screens, which is just amazing, using that 100 times resolution. So you can have an analog Game Boy version, you can have the original DMG, I'm not sure what that stands for, uh, the original Game Boy Pocket, and that's a, a greyer display, and you've got the original light, so you've kind of got that afterburner style sort of blue glow behind it. And then you've got a pinball neon matrix, and I don't know if that is from the Virtual Boy, but it certainly looks like it. So I would go back to the original DMG because it's that wonderful green Game Boy screen that we all knew so well. It does this for all of the machines that it supports out of the box. So that includes the Game Gear and the Lynx and the Neo Geo Pocket. So before we move on to different systems, I will just try a Game Boy Advance one. Here I've got Super Mario World, and that goes in the back of the pocket and turn it on. There it is, playing the original cartridge, and it just looks wonderful. The screen looks so clear. I just can't emphasize enough how great it looks. And it plays really well as well. The buttons are really nice. The only slight uh, criticism I have of the hardware is the D-pad. Sometimes when I'm pushing right, it registers down, which makes Sonic roll, things like that. And you can accidentally change gear if you're playing a racing game. But you can get used to it. You just have to change your muscle memory, which isn't ideal. And I just wish the D-pad was a bit better, especially seeing as it's emulating something that Nintendo made so well. Nintendo's D-pads are famous for being so good, so it's a shame that this isn't quite up to scratch, but it's very, very close. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. I did buy with mine the Game Gear adapter, so I'll hold it for you to have a look. It's nice and shiny and transparent plastic, and you can see all the workings inside. 
Yeah, there we go. And this just slots nicely into the back, like that. And then if you get a Game Gear game, I've got here one of the first ones I ever had, Sonic the Hedgehog, and that goes in here like that. And does stick out the top a little bit, but it's not too bad. This is how you see it while you're playing, and that looks absolutely fine. It's promising. Yeah, there we go, just like that. There it is running a demo loop, and it looks amazing, doesn't it? Look at that. You can actually see the background. It's not blurring as it scrolls, which is literally a revelation. Game Gear games have honestly never looked as good as they do on the analog pocket. I'm usually a stickler for the original hardware. Um, I even got a McWill modded Game Gear, which you see in one of my other videos, which I thought was amazing, but it didn't have the one-to-one uh, -one pixel ratio. So you got some weird artifacts across the screen with the uh, nearest neighbor scaling, which wasn't great. But this, I mean, the screen of the Game Gear wasn't the same size as that of the Game Boy. So you haven't got exactly a one-to-one -one scaling like the 10 times of the Game Boy, but with so many pixels on the screen, better than iPhone 13, in fact, in terms of pixel density, Game Gear games just look amazing. They absolutely pop. And you might think sometimes that the colors are a bit too saturated. There's an option to turn that down. And again, you've got the different versions of the Game Gear, including the Majesco version, uh, which is just so cool. And you can just have it also natively as well, so you don't have any screen simulation. You can just enjoy the pixels if that's your bag. As for me, I do like seeing all of the pixels square without uh, the simulation of the screen, because the Game Gear screen, although I do love it in some ways, wasn't that great, so I don't think you need to simulate it. It's better actually to have these amazing games, because the Game Gear's library is fantastic displayed as they should have been seen in the first place, in crystal clarity. But it gets better because I've got one of these. Now this is a Gear Master. So that's a Master System Converter for the Sega Game Gear. Now you wouldn't think that this would work, right? You've got your analog pocket and then you've got this monstrosity which is going to fit into the Game Gear adapter. So you get this and then you think it's going to get bigger because you're going to put a game in it. This is Super Monaco Grand Prix and Super Monaco Grand Prix goes in the back facing you like that. And then all being well, it should work. Let's see. Promising. Yeah, look at that. Master System Super Monaco Grand Prix running on the analog pocket through a Master System adapter going into a Game Gear adapter and it looks amazing. It really does. So let's just start. Here we go. And of course, being the Master System version, it's got a split screen there. And there we go, we're away. It's slower turning than the Game Gear one. In fact, you can also spin on this version, which I don't think you can on the Game Gear, unless you hit something. There we go, I spun. <laughs> so Master System games actually were something that worked really well on the McWill modded Game Gear because um, the screen of the McWill mod is actually better suited to Master System games because it's more direct scaling. So the Game Gear games are a funny, funny resolution. Uh, not quite square, but not so rectangular. Um, but Master System games look amazing on this. It's definitely the best way that I've ever seen to play them. So that's it for the built-in ones in terms of the adapters that I've got, because I haven't got the Lynx adapter or the Neo Geo Pocket, but I'm sure they're amazing because all of the quality is extremely high. And so we come to the firmware updates which allow you to sideload ROMs. Now this wasn't available at launch because ROMs are a legally dodgy area, but there are ways to get legal ROMs and there are two that I can tell you about. One is if you buy, say, the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis collection from Steam, because when you buy that game, if you just navigate to the folder that contains all the game's files, you'll find one that's just called uncompressed ROMs. So you can take the ROMs from that folder, put them onto an SD card, and load them into your analog pocket, completely legally because you've bought them. Also, law states that you can make one copy of a piece of software that you own. So the only way that you can do that is with something like a Retro 2, and I have one here, I bought one of these for this exact reason. They used to be about 40 pounds, but I had to get this for about 100 from Germany because they don't make them anymore, uh, which is a real shame because they're so good. Basically, inside the Retro 2, you just get two slots like that, and the top one here is for Super Nintendo games, and the bottom one is for Genesis and Mega Drive games. I don't think I own any SNES cartridges. Yeah, I'm a big Nintendo fan of the Switch, but I don't own any SNES carts, because I haven't got a SNES at the moment. Yeah, that's weird. 
but I do have a Mega Drive cartridge and so you just load that in there like that and this allows you then to move the game onto the SD card to make a copy that you can then play and it works because this doesn't actually work in a Mega Drive properly because the battery's dead. But the Analog Pocket's Mega Drive Core, which is the sort of emulator program, actually supports save games. It doesn't support save states, but you can still take screenshots. But basically it just works completely normally. So I'll just load it up now. Just go to Open FPGA. Um, there was also um, a version of Space War available through the Analog Pocket website. Uh, which lets you play the first ever video game ever made. But we won't do that today. Okay, so these are all the legal ROMs that I have. And we've got Ayrton Senna's Super Monaco Grand Prix 2. And there we go, it loads. And it is absolutely beautiful. I love this thing. It's just so nice. I think it's a, a wonderful game and it's it's been too long out of regular play. So there it goes on its demo loop. It does sound a bit funny, but it, it sounds pretty amazing. You do get stereo speakers on the analog pocket. And the game actually runs even better than it would normally because you can tell it to run as a US Genesis, which is 17.5% faster than the Mega Drive version that I was used to as a kid. So I'll just demonstrate the uh, save system. Oh, one, one interesting thing though is that you do have to go into the options menu and change the language from Japanese to English every time. I don't know why it does that because I don't think it does that on a real Mega Drive. Very strange. But you've got the World Championship and you can go to continue and there it is. I have actually been winning the World Championship on this and I just got into the Madonna team, which I haven't done for a good 20 years. <laughs> 30 years? Oh my god. So that's about it for the demonstration of what the Analog Pocket does, but I must just enthuse about it because I absolutely love it. I think it's a better piece of hardware than the Steam Deck, and I do have a Steam Deck, and I'm less impressed with the Steam Deck than I am with this. It's completely revitalized my retro collection to the point where I can just sit down and load up Flicky and have a go at the high scores on that. Um, I can enjoy Super Hang On, and I've got Super Monaco Grand Prix 1 as well as Super Monaco Grand Prix 2. Um, I've been playing Desert Strike. It's just wonderful to have these games from my childhood, just there, available to pick up and play whenever I want. It's so cool. But also seeing the Game Gear games in particular in such wonderful clarity. It's like having a new Game Gear. And as I said before, I am usually a stickler for original hardware. I'm not into emulation at all. But this is so good and feels and sounds so authentic. It feels like I'm playing a Game Gear. Obviously it's not the right shape and it, it doesn't actually feel the same under your hands, but the games feel like Game Gear games. They don't feel emulated or compromised in any way. They're just beautiful. So if you have the funds available to get one of these and you have a substantial retro collection, then I would recommend getting it. There is a delay for shipments and I still got stung on import tax after that because they come from the United States and I'm in the UK. So that was another 50 pounds. So it's an expensive thing, but it's one of the best things I've ever bought. So I give the Analog Pocket a very well-deserved straight five stars. Well, that's all for this video. If you want to see more videos about retro games, then there's plenty of that on my channel. I've also got modern game reviews and tech reviews, as well as music videos and much more. So take a look around and see what you like. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care until next time. and I'll see you then. Cheers.